Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Echo. Um, before we get started, I couldn't help but notice in the previous few videos that for some reason, the frame rate sort of tanks whenever there's a scene transition, and I don't know why this is happening. The only thing I've been running when I record these videos is Echo and OBS, so I'm not sure what the deal is, but I'm going to try and look into that before the next uh, batch of recordings that I do. But enough about my technical issues. Uh, let's get back to the story. When last we left off, Chase was having uh, another strange dream. I wonder what that might be about. But let's see. Let's see what Monday brings for the group. Yiya River feeds Emma Lake from the north. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a farther drive than the lake itself, but it does have a few nice clearings along its edge. One of them has a few benches and a rusted to hell public grill that I'm sure no one has used in decades. This is the place that we go. As we're unloading Leo's van, I decide to get the b-roll of the lake right away. It won't have much of a presence in the packet, so I think I'm just going to narrate over it later. The actual lake is only a few minutes walk from here. It's a bit difficult navigating around the sagebrush, and I know I'm going to have to check for ticks later. By the time I reach the lake, my friends are pretty far behind me, hidden behind a few bends and hills. I'm getting uncomfortable with the idea of me holding this camera while I navigate this terrain. It probably would have been better if Leo had just parked the car next to the reservoir while I got out to film, but I guess even that still wasn't okay. There's a large square of paved ground next to the parking lot now, several benches, and a row of brand new grills. Several lamps have been erected around the area too. Leo is right about the town trying to turn the reservoir into a recreational spot. I can actually see a few jet boats skimming through the water, leaving long trails of white behind them. There's even what looks like a feline of some sort fishing in the shallows. It would explain why the motel is still in business. Lake Emma is fairly small, only about 12 miles long and 5 wide. I look around before climbing to the top of a nearby hill and get my shots. Even with a few people there, it's still pretty quiet, aside from the train horns, and it's kind of eerie. I rev up and start to quickly make my way back. It's hard to explain why I'm getting freaked out in broad daylight with people around. Either it's because of what happened all those years ago, or I'm just psyching myself out. I'm glad to hear my friends' voices again as I get closer. <sighs> then again, it sounds like they're fighting. Been acting like a dick all day. Be glad I came here at all. Apparently, it would have been better if you hadn't. Maybe I should just fucking leave then? It sounds a lot more serious than our usual squabbles, so I quicken my pace. They seem to quiet down a bit once they see me coming. TJ's off to the side, looking out over the river, occasionally throwing a rock into it. Carl sits in a lawn chair, one of six that have been set out in a semicircle. He has his chin on a fist as he lazily stares at me. Jenna and Leo both stand next to each other, looking at Flynn who's got his back turned, rummaging through the cooler. Hey, what's wrong? Leo sighs. <sighs> Nothing. You get your film? Uh, yeah, got it. The silence is still awkward, and I have no idea what the hell to do with myself. I finally realize that I'm still holding the camera and decide to put that away. Hey, uh, I'm gonna go for a quick swim. Haven't been in water in a while. When we first got here, I was completely disappointed to find that the motel didn't have its own swimming pool. Being an otter, I like to swim at least once a day, if not more. At this point, it had been three. Flynn finally turns around, a beer in his hand as he cracks it open. It was true that he'd been acting a bit strange today. He'd held the entire trip up by a few hours, and when he'd finally shown up, his eyes were bleary, and he seemed sluggish, like he'd been up all night. When we'd asked if he was alright, he brushed us off. Yeah, thanks for the help setting up, Chase. You're about as useful as this fat ass here. He swings the paw holding the beer at Carl. Flynn. So enjoy that swim while I set everything out. Yeah, I will. Make my soda a diet while you're at it. 
I've had it with Flynn. He's souring the trip with his need to be an asshole. Go fuck yourself. I ignore him as I strip off my shirt and head to the riverbank. I pat TJ on the shoulder as I pass him before slipping into the water. We're currently in the middle of a drought that has lasted the past three years, so the water is low. Only about ten feet at its deepest. It's enough, though, and God, it feels good. It's spring, so the water is pretty cold. I swim back and forth a few times before finally diving in. Eventually, I settle on drifting to the bottom, laying and gripping onto the rocky floor as I stare up at the shimmery light above me. I feel the gentle current run over my body. It's nice to be away from all that tension above me. I feel isolated, alone. And for now, that feels good. Only I could really come down this deep, the others not being able to hold their breath as long or being too little. I remember when we were younger, I would give the others rides around the lake, able to swim for nearly half a mile and back. Even Flynn the asshole had done it a few times. There was one skill I had that I was proud of, even if it was inherent to my species. It still made me somehow useful, or at least different from everyone else. In a good way. I had always felt like the odd one out in the group, as strange as it sounds. Where everyone else has a strong, distinct personality, I was just... Average? Sometimes I wonder if they were just friends with me because we all had to be when we were younger. This whole trip has kind of forced me to think back on all the memories I have of this place, and my friends. They were always doing the cool things, being different, while I just sort of blended into the background. Even then I wanted to do something, to stand out somehow. That's... that's what I'm trying to do here. I guess. It's been about seven minutes, and I only know that because that's about as long as I can hold my breath. I decide I should go back up and help out, so I slowly let myself float back up towards the surface, trying to stay in the same spot. When I surface, it's pretty quiet. For a second, I wonder if everyone is just gone. Of course, that's ridiculous, and as I come over the embankment, everyone's there. Predictably, Flynn didn't get my food out. So I go to the cooler to grab a sandwich and soda before sitting in an empty chair next to Leo. Apparently it was a good idea to bring lawn chairs, considering the tables looked like they were covered in a year's worth of bird shit. How is the swim? His tone is bitter and salty. He's not in his usual grumpy but good-natured mood. He's genuinely unhappy. What the hell was his deal? Amazing. I'm gonna have to come back here again sometime during the week. You lizard people don't understand. You hardly ever need water. It always scares the hell out of me when you're down there that long. I'm built for it. Remember when you'd give us rides? That was fun. Remember when you'd always scream like a girl when Chase would go out too far? Oh wow, I remember that now. Hey, I've never really liked water. Anyway, Chase would do it on purpose. He knew I didn't like it out to a certain point. Carl looks at me. You know what was really cool was when you'd take us down for a dive. Oh yeah, Chase was like her own little submarine. I'm starting to get that otters are swimming clowns vibe again. Still, I kind of enjoy the attention. We get you to take us to the bottom so we could look for treasure. Leo makes air quotes around the last word. And you know, we probably would have found way more stuff if you guys hadn't been dragging me down. I remember when- Are we really fucking talking about this? Everyone turns to look at Flynn. His voice is low and dangerous. There's a chill in the air because we all know what he means. I was actually feeling pretty good about it at this point. Like we crossed the bridge, being able to talk about it for once. Apparently, we hadn't. Flynn. No, I'm serious. Do you think it's okay to fucking talk about this when the lake is just a quarter mile that way? You know what, Flynn? I think we should. Isn't that part of the reason why we're here? No! If that were the case, we'd be over there! But we're here! And why is that? Everyone's quiet for a moment. I see TJ shrink into his chair, staring hard at his lap. Flynn, we came here because Chase needed footage. A change comes over Flynn. His face darkens and everyone senses it. Flynn turns to me and it takes some effort not to flinch back. 
Yeah? Why's that, Chase? You gonna put that in your fucking documentary? No! I... I... Emma Lake is an important part of Echo's history. I just... Just what? Flynn raises his brow ridge at me, and finally I just lower my eyes. This was a stupid fucking idea. You know what, Flynn? If you'd be a little more open, tell us what's on your mind, we'd be able to avoid a lot of this kind of stuff. Oh, you want to know what's on my mind? Flynn swivels and marches up to Carl. Alright, let's start with you. You're fat, lazy, no motivation, no future. What the hell are you planning on doing with your life? Sit here, waste away an echo, mooching off your parents until you're dead? Carl stares back up at Flynn impassively, though he hunches in on himself a bit further. Flynn, don't do this right now. And you, thinking you're better than everyone else. I can tell, you think everyone in Echo is trash. Just because me and the others haven't left, you think we're lower than you. Just because we don't have an education, we're a bunch of retards. Yeah, well you left your whole fucking family behind without even saying goodbye. You know what's even going on with them right now? What they're dealing with? Yeah, real fucking hero you are. You think I... Stop it, Flynn. Ah, our unquestionable leader. We wouldn't have been friends without you, would we? That's why you brought us here, right? So we could all bond? Or... Wait, was it just because you wanted to get into Chase's pants? Leo's ears fall flat. Probably. You've been a mess ever since you left, so let me be the one to tell you. It's over! It's fucking unhealthy, you're obsessed with him! Slowly his head turns to me, and I brace myself. And I can't imagine why. You, Chase, have the personality of a fucking rock. I wish you could see yourself. You just sit there like a creep, watching everyone, weighing everything that we say. I don't think I haven't caught the way you stare at all of us, like we're all objects to be collected. What, are you just planning to cycle through all of us for sex? Sure seems like it. Flint stops, then exhales. It seems like it's over. I really hope it is. That proves futile, though, as Flynn turns slowly on TJ. I had silently prayed that the Lynx would make a run for it while Flynn had all his attention focused on us. But TJ looks apathetic. Like a statue, there's no, like there's no soul in him. Flynn pauses, though, as if he's at a loss for what to say. Finally... What happened, TJ? Flynn! Leo stands up, and from his posture I can tell the wolf is ready to fight. Memories are starting to flow back. TJ, Flynn thinking he'd done something. Something to... I stand up too. Flynn may sound like a hard ass, but physically Leo had him beat. Easily. Flynn can obviously tell that he might have a fight on his hands though. And it's clear he doesn't want that. He drops his shoulders, seeming to shrink, as if invisible strings that had been holding him up were cut. He turns to us, then gestures at TJ. I just want the truth. Can we just put a stop to this today? Right now? I don't think you know how much of a nightmare this has been for me. Not really knowing. <sighs> TJ. TJ stares up at Flynn, muzzle set grimly. What happened to Sydney? It's dead quiet. TJ stares at the lap, not moving. Come on, let's... Flynn holds up a hand towards me, still staring at TJ. Slowly, TJ looks up. His face still stoic, still made of stone. I already told you what happened. Bullshit! Flynn steps forward, but Leo's there to grab the back of Flynn's shirt and swing him around. I dodge out of the way as Flynn is flung back to land on his ass, kicking up a big cloud of dust. Shit! Flynn, I swear to god, if you start a fight here, I'll drop your stupid ass! Everyone except TJ is standing now, staring at Flynn. Flynn sits there, glaring up at Leo, obviously weighing his chances. He seems to come up short, though, as he spits to the side and stands up, brushing off his pants as he turns away. You're all okay with not knowing? Fuck all of you! He turns back around, hands in his pockets, a bitter look on his face. This whole thing was stupid, Leo. We're not even friends anymore. Flynn scuffs the ground before turning and walking towards the trail that goes back to Echo. God damn it, Flynn! Fuck off! Flynn keeps walking, and it's pretty clear that he isn't coming back. 
I raise a paw and rub it over my eyes. What was he doing? He's a passionate guy that will sometimes just explode with those insecurities before running away and hiding for a few days. He skewered us all like that before, that was classic Flynn. But he was especially mean. Dark. And the part with TJ... I vaguely remember Flynn having some sort of suspicion, but that had been a long time ago. Had he been sitting on that this whole time? I look to the left and see that TJ's gone. Carl's still sitting down, but now it looks like he's pulling out a joint. Leo's walking off down under the trail, cursing while Jenna follows him. I stand there, next to my chair, undecided. Well now, uh, a lot just happened. Excuse me for one second while I take a sip of water. Flynn's tirade took a lot out of my voice. This here is the decision that will decide how the rest of the, of the story goes. I think, for starters, we'll do this. I watched Jenna's tail disappear through the sagebrush. They're headed down the same trail that I had used to get to Lake Emma. TJ! TJ did seem to head off in that direction while we were fighting, though I can't imagine he'd go to the lake. I should go with him to help find the lynx. I'm also a little worried about Leo. It's been a long time since I've seen him that pissed. When I get there, I find Leo leaning back with his rear up against a big boulder on the shore. Bittersweet memories flood in. That rock is almost as much of a staple of my childhood as the actual lake is. It's weird like that. Every memory I have of this place is dreamy and gold-tinged, but always has a hint of sadness about it, no matter what the situation was. Jenna's standing in front of Leo, her arms folded as she talks to him. I can't see his face, but his posture is sagging and his ears are down, looking way older than he actually is. I stand back for a while, feeling awkward about intervening at this point. Leo occasionally shakes his head, then takes out his phone to look at it. I can see Jenna's getting annoyed, but then she says something and Leo turns his head to look back at me. I seize up for a second, but Jenna is beckoning me with her paw while Leo isn't looking. I start stumbling over the rocks towards them as Leo looks back down at his phone, and Jenna starts walking towards me. <sighs> Just talk to him, he'll listen to you. Well, we should do what the lady says, right? She passes by me, going back towards the trail. Sure, he'll probably listen to me, but I have no idea what I should say. The rocks are actually hard to navigate, especially when you don't have any protection for your feet. I'm almost to the boulder when my foot catches on an edge of rock and I yelp and fall forward, knees first into the sharp rocks. Ah! Pain shoots up my legs and my eyes clench shut as I cringe silently. Shit, you alright? I look up and see Leo looking down at me, his ears up now at the sound of my fall. Yeah, yeah, fine. Leo frowns and reaches over with a paw, which I grab onto and pull myself up with. I make my way around him, being a little more careful about where I put my feet as I position myself next to him against the boulder. I put both my paws behind myself and heave myself up on top of the boulder, letting my legs dangle over the side. Quick water break! Okay. Ugh. I'm so damn clumsy. You're an otter. Wow, asshole. I say it jokingly, but Leo's not really smiling. Instead, he sticks a paw back into his pocket and pulls out a slightly flat-looking cigarette. I give a start and stare. I shouldn't be surprised. I could smell it on him when I first got here. It's just that I'm not used to seeing him do it. He started right after I left. He pulls out a lighter, lights it, takes a drag, then blows the smoke out the side of his muscle, away from me. You're meant to swim, not walk on rocks. I mean, technically Carl is built for that and he's still falling down all the time. I think that's because Flynn's always tripping him with his tail. Speaking of Carl... Grunting, I lean over sideways and look at the side of the boulder. I find what I'm looking for instantly. A series of chips and scratches, outlining the rough figure of a canine with a long cape and an S on his chest. Heh, <laughs> it's still here! Carl's drawing? Shit, I forgot about that. Never finished it, did he? Nah, but it's pretty good. Remember how Superwolf was the only thing he talked about that summer? Heh, <laughs> yeah. 
And the movie wasn't even that good. He loved it, though. Yeah, and I guess that's all that really mattered. Leo grimaces and reaches over to my knee. I wince and look down as he puts his thumb and index around a cut that I hadn't noticed until now. Blood is oozing through the fur and leaking down my shin. We'll need to clean that out. I shrug. It's not a big deal. Nah, we'll stop at the convenience store and get some peroxide. There's some nasty shit around this lake. It's fine, seriously. Just to be safe. I smirk. Safe? Like this? I reach up and grab at the cigarette dangling from his lips. He's quick, though, and whips his head away before taking it out of his muzzle. Hey! Don't hate me. Why the fuck are you smoking? His ears fall flat again and he glares. Why the fuck do you care? He spits that out with so much venom that I lean away from him, eyes wide. He's never talked to me like that before, and I was joking, too. What? Leo quickly looks away and doesn't say anything. I stare at his face for a while, watch his eyes flick around as he just shake his head, shakes his head. Are you still mad at me? We talked- Of course I'm still mad, Chase! Talking doesn't just fix three years! All the progress I thought we made on Saturday was an illusion. Leo's just as upset as he'd always been about what happened. I- I don't know what you want me to say. What do you want me to say, Leo? That I was wrong to leave? That I should have stayed here? Not leaving me in the dark would have been a good start. Yeah, I fucked that up, but it happened, and I can't fix that. What do you want to happen now? Leo stretches his arms out to either side in one giant shrug. I don't know! This is already familiar. A thousand past fights flash through my mind. Did we ever agree on anything? I slide off the boulder and Leo snaps his muzzle toward me, probably thinking I'm gonna leave. Instead, I lean one paw against the rock as I turn to glare at him. It feels better yelling at someone standing up rather than sitting down. Oh, I know exactly what you want. Oh, do you? You just want me to drop everything and come back here, back to Echo. When did I ever ask you to drop anything? I just want to know if you're coming back. How am I supposed to know that? Why can't you plan ahead farther than next week? I swear it's always like this with you. I let out an exasperated laugh. <laughs> I'm 21! I don't fucking know anything about anything! How should I know what I want? Well, I'm here. Don't you want to come back and live with me? We always planned for it. His voice softens, and I pause. Thinking about it right now, it is something I would want, it's just... Is Echo so bad that its negatives outweigh my benefits? I... I mean... I gesture at the town in the distance, looking as shitty and rusted as ever. Then to the lake, looking as shitty and mucky as ever. Then to the desert around us, looking as shitty and dry as ever. I let the scenery speak for itself. So yeah. Leo rolls his eyes. Poo, chica, otter. I'm starting to think you just want an excuse not to be around me. I'm starting to think that what Flynn said was true. He looks straight at me, eyes narrowing over his muzzle, his nostrils flaring. What? I'm not obsessed with you, I just... I miss everyone, that's all. Is that wrong? I go quiet for a while and turn to look back over the lake, squinting at the bright, reflective flashes of light. It can be. But then, I don't even know if he's telling the truth. He'd never say whether or not this whole thing he'd planned was just for me. He doesn't say anything, and we just sit there for a while. Even for a wolf, this whole sticking together thing is a little intense. He brought us together at the very beginning, sure, but after Sydney, it was on a whole different level. He barely ever let us leave his sight. That's when I notice a dark figure across the lake, walking on the side of the road. It's Flynn. Excuse me, it's Flynn, and he's heading back to Echo. I can see that Leo spotted him too, his ears and eyes following him, but he doesn't say anything. Finally, I speak up. So... Is what he said about me true? No. He says it quietly, but the answer is instant. Really? Leo takes another drag on the cigarette. Weirdly enough, I actually kind of like the smell of the smoke. 
I think his problem with you is that you don't act like you used to as a kid, or teenager. He's told me before. I mean, you used to be a snarky motherfucker, even more than you are now. My stomach sinks. Yeah? Yeah, you grew up, mellowed out. Again, my insides twist, and I don't trust myself to speak right then. Leo gets the wrong idea and smiles, putting his arm around me and pulling me up to his side. What he said about everyone was total bullshit, especially Jenna. His whole family mantra did have its limits. The fact that Leo is so defensive of Jenna's deci decision to leave her family shows what a piece of shit they really are. I'm just glad that he's changed the subject, though. Leaning my head on his shoulder, I let his hold comfort me. He's still watching Flynn. Pooh, chica, I can't fucking believe he did this now. Idiot. IDIOT! Leo shouts it loud across the lake, and if I could, I'd lower my ears like a canine. I see the small figure that is Flynn turn around and look back at us. He stays like that for a while. It looks like he's examining us. Finally, he turns back around and keeps going towards Echo. Fucking idiot. How the hell am I sp gonna go ahead the Let me try that again. Fucking idiot. How the hell am I gonna go ahead with what I planned this week? In the past, Flynn would have his blow-ups, then get over it, and so would we. But this time really did feel different. It was like he'd been chipping away at our group for years, and finally this is what broke it into pieces. Now there's no putting things back together. Maybe it would have been better if we didn't come here. It's sort of my fault. Nope, it's Flynn's fault. Stupid to blame yourself. I don't know, we always had problems. Probably would have been better to just leave things as they were. No! Jesus, why does everyone act like this whole thing, Echo, our friendship, is some kind of horrible tragedy? It hasn't exactly been a walk in the park. Life isn't a walk in the park. This is where we come from. Find some good in it instead of bitching about everything. It could be so much worse. My parents told me stories about their hometown. And compared to where I was born, this isn't shit. He huffs out smoke through his nose, not bothering to blow it away from me this time. And I'm engulfed in the smell of tobacco. I mean, not to be an asshole, but you gringos have it easy. My mom got a phone call almost every month telling her they'd kill my dad just because they had money. Leo's always been good at making me feel like a spoiled brat. I'm sorry. His arm tightens around me and I turn my head to rub my nose into his chest. I can smell his musk under the heavy deodorant. It's a familiar smell I like. Don't be. I mean, we all play our cards, right? But try to have a little more perspective. He leans his chin on the top of my head. I feel like we should have some boundaries since we're not exactly a couple anymore. But this feels right. I love this town, and I love you guys. I just want things to work out, not to lose touch. We had something really special. You're such a wolf. <laughs> Thanks. I lay a paw on his thigh and rub it slowly, thinking. I mean, is there really no way you could leave with me? It would make things so much easier. Please don't ask that. I can't leave them. I could never do that. You know this. Of course I did. We've argued about it over a hundred times already. I squeeze his thigh. So, are you still mad at me? I listen to Leo breathe in deeply, my head rising with his chest. No, Otter, I'm not mad. We just have a lot of things to figure out. But we will. I guess that's as good a place as any to leave off, so I move on to another subject. So now that Flint's fucked up the trip, what do we do next? He hasn't. We'll fix this. Just gotta get that dumbass to apologize. But once I do, we have a birthday to plan. I raise my brows in surprise. It wasn't anyone's birthday anytime soon. Huh, whose birthday? Carl's. Carl? His birthday wasn't until the end of April, literally a month away. It's early, really early, I know, but I'm kind of limited here on ideas of what we can do. I guess that makes sense. So when's that gonna be? Wednesday. We need to buy the stuff tomorrow when I have the day off. Leo looks at his phone again. Speaking of which, I need to drive you guys back so I can get back to work. Well, alright. I'm not doing much else tomorrow. I should be working on the project, but I've got plenty of time. Leo slides off the boulder and turns back to me. I'll ask Jenna and TJ too. 
I'll let Flynn cool off for a day. Do you know where TJ went? Yeah, he just texted me that he wanted to be left alone, which I understand. I get off the boulder as well, and Leah reaches a paw out to me. And this time watch where you're walking. Hold on to me. That's probably a good idea. And that is the end of day three, Monday. We will pick things up with Leo's root proper next time. But until then, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye!